Now we begin with the most important reaction and that is called as hydrogenation of alkenes. Now my dear friends, you must have heard about this reaction many times. Hydrogenation of alkenes. And you know the product also very well and that is alkane. It's one of the most important reactions in pharmaceutical industry. It basically rea re uh, requires high temperature and high pressure. But then, when you talk about an industry process, then always we are trying to find out ways and means whereby the reaction can be carried out under milder conditions. And with that perspective in mind, one of the best transition metal catalysts which was being designed to carry out this reaction, and that is called as Wilkinson's catalyst. Now when you talk about, my dear friends, the Wilkinson's catalyst, it's, as I said, it's going to be a transition metal complex. And the formula of which is nothing but RH Cl PPS3 thrice. This is what the complex is. If you want the RPSC name of this, these are the four ligands which are being as associated with the rhodium. PPH3 is called as triphenylphosphine. Alright, this is chloro. So we start with chloro because we go into alphabetical terms. So it's chloro. There are three of them, so we call it as tris. In the bracket, triphenylphosphine. It's a neutral ligand, rhodium, and in the bracket we'll just write down as this charge is 1 because chlorine is minus 1, so this has to be plus 1. Now, when you talk about rhodium, rhodium is basically an uh, atomic number is 45 and its electron number of electrons in the outermost shell are 9, but then because it already exists in a state of plus 1, so that means there are 8 electrons, so rhodium has got 8 electrons, it belongs to a cobalt family, cobalt atomic number is 27. Rhodium is 45. All right. So rhodium has got eight electrons in this particular complex. Plus, there are four ligands coordinated with rhodium. With each ligand donating a pair of electrons. So that means it comes out to be eight. So that means it is a 16 electron complex. Okay. Now because there are four donor atoms of the ligands which are being coordinated to rhodium, and therefore we say its coordination number is equal to four. All right, the next thing is, as far as the shape is being concerned, it's going to be square planar. All right, and as far as the preparation is being concerned, the preparation of this complex has been carried out by the reflux of rhodium chloride, RHCl3, with the ethanolic solution. with triphenylphosphine, which is going to be in excess. Okay, so refluxing of uh, RHCl3 ethanolic solution, that is rhodium chloride, with an excess of triphenylphosphine, results in the formation of a red colored complex. Complex, 16 electron complex, coordination number four, square in a complex. Okay, and uh, as I said, that this is nothing but it's a transition metal complex and it behaves as a catalyst. The name of this is Wilkinson's catalyst and it was the very first catalyst which was being used in carrying out this most important reaction and that is hydrogenation of an alkene to give you alkene. I, got, I think you got the introduction right. With the mechanism using this Wilkinson's catalyst after going through the introduction part and that is hard to begin with. I write down the Wilkinson's catalyst in this format, okay, where P is actually nothing but PPH3. I'm just trying to condense it. It's a 16 electron complex. It undergoes a reversible partial dissociation. I hope you understand the word partial dissociation. That means all the bonds are not going to be broken. Okay, only one of which is going to be broken and you get RHCl P2 plus P. Okay? So from coordination number equal to 4, we are going to coordination number equal to 3. One of the ligand is out, so that means two electrons are lost. So 16 electron catalyst undergoes a partial dissociation. It gives you a 14 electron catalyst, okay, with coordination number equal to 3. Alright? So now we begin with RH Cl P2. It will undergo an addition of hydrogen. I'll show it this way as well so you understand this better. 
it's a reversible addition reaction. Now what is going to happen is this bond is going to break. RH and H both going to be added over here. So as a result of which what we get is C here RH, H, H, P and P. Coordination number becomes equal to 5 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Coordination number is equal to 3 over here. So it results in the increase in the coordination number from 3 to 5 and also it increases the oxidation state of rhodium which was previously plus 1 now it has become what? Plus 3. So I hope you understand this. These are the two most important criteria which was taking place. Increase in the coordination number of the metal as well as the increase in the oxidation state of the metal. Come on, can you recollect please in the previous part of this catalysis? Oh yes. It is oxidative addition reaction. Okay, it is oxidative addition. Okay, and it's a reversible reaction. So the reverse part of that is you are it right. Yes, it's reductive elimination reaction. All right. So this was a 14 electron complex. Now this comes out to be a 16 electron complex. Right. Now next thing is we take into there is a vacant site available over here. And because there is a vacant site available over here, so that means the alkene can go into that vacant site. So we go into the alkene, it goes into the vacant site of rhodium. Now here the addition is taking place across the double bond. So how we are going to show it as? This is how the addition is going to take place. Okay? Uh, now it's very clear. Because the rhodium is being attached to the double bonded alkene. So let us first of all find out the number of electrons. It is being attached to an alkene. Alkene is an hydrocarbon. And when you talk about an hydrocarbon, we apply the hepticity rule. You know this very well. So in a hepticity rule, it's very simple. That is the number of carbon atoms which are simultaneously attached to the metal. One electron per carbon atom has to be considered. So there are two carbon atoms which are simultaneously attached to rhodium and therefore from 16 electron it becomes what? 18 electron complex. But then at the same time these two carbon becomes what? Pentavalent because already they are four and plus they are attached to rhodium. Pentavalent carbon is considered to be what? Unstable. So this entire part becomes what? Unstable. So as a result of which now this alkene will undergo insertion reaction. Okay and that insertion reaction is going to be between the RH and the H. Alright. So how is going to be that taking place? I just think about some minor changes as far as the configuration is concerned so that you understand this better. I just keep the P over here and I keep the H over here. So now what will happen is this carbon gets attached to rhodium okay, and this carbon gets attached to hydrogen. So that means there are two neighboring carbon atoms which are being attached okay, and which are forming a bond. So you got it right now. It's not one one insertion. It is it is, or yes, it's 1 to insertion. This is a 1 to insertion. Okay? And now when it's a 1 to insertion, so I'll show you how exactly it is going to happen. I'll show a bond now with this card. Already two bonds are there. Now there is going to be a single bond and this H. The H which is going over here, okay, is being attached over here. You got it right? Okay, this is what the changes which is taking place. And this is coming back to the 16 electron complex. Okay, no change in the oxidation state, but then it's bringing to what? A 16 electron complex. Now what will happen is, there is still one more H which is being attached. So there is going to be a rearrangement taking place and this H is going over here to this carbon atom. And as a result of which I get the final product and that is alkane and I get RH, P, P, which is a 14 electron catalyst 
Okay, this was 16 electron, 2 carbon is being out, so 2 electrons being lost, so that means this is going to give you nothing but well, alkene is considered as a ligand over here, okay, and therefore that is going to be out, so 2 electrons being lost, so it gives you a 14 electron catalyst. Now, this 14 electron catalyst can add once again a PPH3 and it gives you a 16 electron catalyst. So, you know very well at the end of this particular reaction, you get the catalyst back. And that, I guess, everybody knows it's very common. Okay, that catalyst is going to be regenerated at the end of the reaction. So this is all exactly this taking place. is oxidative addition reaction. This is also this particular part is about reductive elimination taking place. Then there is uh, insertion taking place of alkyl groups. So that was a one-two insertion reaction. All right. So all these steps, okay, which I had explained you in the previous part, that is going to be taking place over here. All right. And these are the various steps involved. Okay. And this is how. The mechanism takes place and this is how we say that the alkene that is this alkene is getting converted into an alkene okay this is an alkene converted to a alkene i hope this part is very clear to all of you now i would like to explain you one more important thing and that is about the disadvantage what are the limitations of this all right the first limitation is, I just put a cross mark over here so you understand that there are some limitations in this. The first limitation is, the Wilkinson catalyst, WC I just write down is, is soluble catalyst. Okay, it's a soluble catalyst. And therefore, separation from the product is difficult. From the product is what? Difficult. And if you are going to carry out some sort of a, uh, sophisticated techniques for the separation, then there is a possibility of a loss of rhodium. So this is the first one. And the second one, of course, is going to be costly. Okay, this process is costly. So that's the another uh, disadvantage as far as this particular Wilkinson's catalyst is concerned. Okay, so I hope you have understood this very well. And in this way, we have co covered, or I will say uncovered, the chapter on catalysis, it is basically of four parts where we started with what is catalysis all about, what are the requirements of a good catalyst, then we talk about the types of catalysis, homogeneous as well as heterogeneous, we did a comparison between the two, then we discuss about some of the most important steps which are being involved in the hydrogenation, or yeah, just simple words, forget about the hydrogenation, we just simply say homogeneous catalysis, and then finally the Wilkinson catalyst which is used for the hydrogenation of alkene to give alkane. Okay, so this is the way the entire chapter is all about and I hope you have understood this. I enjoyed myself presenting in front of you as you must have enjoyed by going through this. Alright, so all the very best. Thank you.